Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sound Ideas. It's been a while, I know. Um, I was just putting together a tutorial for a song for a student of mine by The Neighbourhood, and the song is The Sweater Song. And I thought there was a really cool single note part in there with some delay and some reverb that might be interesting to talk about it. So I've dialed up the sound, and I'm entirely using my MacBook here, and I'm running Logic, um, and I'm using plugins to do this. But again, the clues in the name sound ideas that you should be able to kind of replicate these settings on modelers, real amps, any hardware or software, plugins, anything you have, free, paid, or otherwise. Um, so let's dive in, and we'll check out how to do this. All right, so here we are inside of Logic itself, and um, I've got a few key things running here. I've got my guitar track with Helix Native and CLA guitars from Waves, but that's not turned on just yet. We'll get to that. And then on a bus, I've got my delay running. Again, you don't have to worry about buses or anything like this. Paid plugins, free plugins, just use what you have. Um, that's exactly what I did. These are sort of my, my go-to things, so this is how I did the sound. Okay. So I've got Helix Native running and I've dialed up this preset here after watching a video online, um, which I'll drop a little clip in of in this video as well, where the two guys from the band are giving a rundown of their equipment. It's from 2014, so it's a little bit old now, but from other videos I've watched that are a bit more recent of them playing live and things, it doesn't seem like things have changed too much on their back line and their equipment. Like, just kind of, just depends. I don't know, my DeVille, I kind of, I don't know, usually I have a good amount of bass. Uh, you know, I try not to crank my treble up too much because like my tone with like the reverb and delays and stuff, sometimes it can be too piercing. So I kind of like try to roll that off a little bit. Uh, yeah, and then on my basement, it's really simple. It's only volume, treble, and bass. And I actually really like it like that because it's just so simple. There's not like reverb or like a presence knob, even though this has it. Uh, or like this has like distortion or stuff like that. But I think this is cooler because it's just so simple. Like For this single note part, the guy's playing a, a Hot Rod DeVille um, or a Fender style amp seems to be his uh, preferred one for this anyway. So I just went for the US double norm. Didn't really change too much to the presets um, in this amp setting. I just brought up the drive a little bit as I'm playing a Fender Telecaster. I think he plays a Jazz Master or a Jaguar. Um, if I remember rightly. So I'm playing the closest thing that I have, you know, fixed bridge Telecaster, and uh, I'm in the middle position. Everything's at full. So that bit of drive just helps a little bit to just bring out a little bit of grit on the notes. Um, and you can hear the big reverb, which we'll talk about in a second. After that, noise gate. In the room I'm in, playing single core pickups, it can be a little bit noisy. So just while I'm recording, um, I've got this noise gate on just to bring some of the background buzz, 60 cycles hum stuff uh, down a little bit. After that, some reverb. So again, stock setting for Cave, so it's quite a big reverb. I brought the decay up, I think, a bit more. And then just kind of leveled that out with the mix so it wasn't too overwhelming. So here's a dead note, just to hear that. Beautiful big decay. And then the IRs that I'm using are from Ownhammer. I much prefer them over the stock line six stuff, but that's a debate for a whole nother time. And uh, I always tend to use these SS Live media um, or maybe the studio one as well. Um, I'm not sure what pack that is. It's one of the standard own hammer ones. I've had that for quite a long time, but there's a quick list of stuff there. Really good. I'd recommend it. And then I always bring the low cut up on that. And for this one, I've actually left the high cut alone, but you could perhaps bring that down just a smidge as well, maybe to something like 16, that kind of area. Even probably lower than that, much above that, you're not going to make any difference really to a guitar. So that's what I've got going on on the, the native side of things. Really great uh, program plugin. I'd recommend that to a lot of people. It's really, really easy to use and sounds pretty good. So let's get rid of that. After that, I'm going into CLA Guitars. Let's turn that on as well. Um, this is from Waves, plugin from Waves, and I'm using this to widen, turn things to stereo from mono, and then just a little bump in the lower region and a little bit of compression. So after watching that same video where they're running through their pedals and um, their amp, the guy happens to mention that he likes to run his compressor after his reverb. So that's what I've replicated here, and I think it works quite nicely. Uh, yeah, it starts with your tuner, and it goes, what, to my, my reverb and my compression? I don't know, I use Boss Reverb and Boss Compression. 
with that, he thinks it sounds pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, and I, I throw my compression after my reverb. I feel like a lot of people don't really do that or put it directly after your reverb, but I think it makes a cool like sound. Yeah, and then I have a line six delay, which is pretty cool. Um, so we've got Helix Native and then the CLA guitar. So the compression is coming after here um, to replicate that. So now this is with Helix Native stuff going on, which includes the reverb and now the CLA guitar. I'll turn this on and off so you can hear it. So here's just a chord. <laughs> Here's without CLA. Again with. So that compression brightens things up in the stereo, obviously. Um, gives it a bit of width, which is really nice. So the two key things there, big reverb and a bit of compression happening after the amp and after the reverb, which is perhaps not normally the way of doing things, but there we go. So the final kind of piece of the puzzle then for this part is this delay. I've got the delay running on a bus here in Logic just to have a bit more control over it. And I'm using a, a real studio classic, the uh, Echo Boy from Sound Toys. Fantastic plugin if you can get it on sale. Um, worth having, you could do so much with it and it sounds great. So I've got the mix 100% wet here because I'm using it on a bus. Um, if you were using this hardware, you might have to dial that mix in um, a little bit differently but feedback we've not got much feedback going on we just want to kind of give a bounce to each of the single notes we're playing here so the really important one is setting this to a quarter note delay so here's with the delay as well let's play a single note okay, the reverb filling out the space behind that delay so the delay itself is kind of giving me a rhythmic aspect with this quarter note kind of bouncing quarter note and then the delay is filling out the space obviously after that um, one more thing I do is bring the high cut over a little bit. I like my delays a little bit darker. I think they just stay out of the way of the actual note, the attack of the actual note. So here's with the reverb, everything on with the delay, all the stuff I've just showed you. And here's the first part of the riff. There we go. If I turn Echo Boy off and do the same thing. Still nice, but it's missing that rhythmic aspect. Okay, so let's put the whole riff together with this sound and then we'll wrap this up. So here we go. Here's the whole sound uh, once through the, the riff. Nice. All right, guys, I hope that was really helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for another one and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.